Hey, Patrick, what's up? Hey, John, I've got a question for you. Bring it on, dude. So I've been married for about 14, almost 15 years now, and my wife and I have a great relationship, great marriage. We've got four kids. Um, she's my soulmate. You know, we communicate well. Um, everything is going great. We love each other. Um, I've actually fallen in love with her more this year, and we're more intimate now than we ever have been in life. Bro, but you're setting problem, this one up, man. <laughs> I am. I am setting it up. You're like, you're like um, making the shoe really high before you drop it. Yes, I am. So here's the problem. All right, what's the other shoe? Um, drop it. I am not sexually attracted to my wife. Okay. And we have sex about two or three times a week, but... Um, I have to fantasize about other people and other situations in order to remain aroused and to perform for her. And I don't like it. I don't want to do this. I wish I could be aroused by her and have a more um, intimate and fulfilling sex life with her, but it's just not happening. Okay. Um, what can I do about that? Uh, so I feel like the preamble, all the stuff you told me up until this uh -huh. isn't true. Because she doesn't know this. And you told me you're more intimate than you've ever been. You're more in love. You're more communicative. You'll talk about everything. But she doesn't know you're not attracted to her. Well, she does now. She just found out a couple days ago. How did she find out? Were you... <laughs> Like, are you posting it online? How'd she find out? Um, I I broke down and confessed to her. I told her, "Look, I'm I have a hard time performing for you, and I have to fantasize in order to do it." Why Why do you consider sex a performance? So that's what she asked. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have to. Uh, I have I have to be the one that initiates. I have to be the one that pulls the whole thing off or else it's just not going to happen. And that leads me to this sense of bro. Like, I don't know what kind of like, I, and I'm, I'm, I would hug you if you were sitting here. Okay. So I want you to hear me say that. Okay. You are facing a challenge that bajillions of people, men and women face in their relationships, but often it's men and it has little to nothing to do with sexual attraction. It has to do with feeling alive in your own home. And you don't. And so everything has to be a theater performance. And it has to, I've got to get my heart rate racing again. And I have to concoct this adventure. And right now I'm trusting you that it's staying in your head, but it will be out of your head shortly. You'll be in somebody else's bed. Because it's that quiet life of desperation. And so as good as you think things are, man, I feel like you're almost having to tell yourself that because you're drowning. You're not even drowning. You're just suffocating in your own home. Is that fair? Or am, I, am I crazy? Uh, you might have a point in some regards. I've, I've been working on a lot of that stuff about you know bringing my heart back to life and. Um, finding out what it is that makes me feel alive. Um, but what makes you, what, what is like, it? What is it? Um, honestly, I'm not really sure. I like um, just hanging out around my friends. I like um, going on small adventures, but you know, I'm not super extroverted either. So a lot of the stuff that people want to do just kind of intimidates me. I guess that's where that's where that's where it is. That's where the adventure is. So you've, you've created this story where I'm kind of introverted, so that's off the table. I'm kind of this, so that's off the table. And yet your body is starving for it. Like, forget, forget your friends for a second. You and your wife, like, what does play look like? What does Eros and Desire look like? How does she seduce you? She doesn't. Okay, that's the issue to be addressed. How can I address that? Openly and directly and with compassion. Because if, if, if this whole thing is one-sided, then the whole thing is an event. And she is just merely a 
an actor on a stage. She's not with you. And you just write the script and hand it to her. In fact, you don't even hand her the script anymore. She just stays. She's just there. Uh. She's not participating in this thing. Well, we have talked about some of that where I've told her, you know, I want, I wish she could in, engage more and, and initiate more and participate more. And she doesn't really know what to say or know what to do. And I've tried to direct her and then she, um, like she'll say, okay, but then she doesn't do anything. And that's, that is, has to be addressed because in many ways you've said, I don't, I, I need this from you. I need to feel loved. And right now in this season, here's what feeling loved looks like. And she nods at you and then goes, I don't really care about that. Uh. And often there's another side to that. Has she told you, here's what makes me feel loved and alive? Yes, she has. And what does she say? Um, she just wants to know that, you know, that I'm thinking about her all day. Like when I'm at work, she likes having text messages, um, from me just telling her that I love her. Um, she likes it when I do, um, kind gentlemanly things for her, like hold the door open for her and cook for her and things like that. And I do that stuff, but it's just, it's not. That's all performative. Yeah. What's beneath that? She wants to feel special. She wants to feel like she is my one and only. But she's not. Because you have a whole cadre of actors that you rely on to fulfill these stories every night or two or three times a week. And you see how it just turns into this weird figure eight. It's this the infinity loop that nobody can catch the other person. It's a strange dance. Where you are literally suffocating in your own home and the way you get little gulps of oxygen is to create fantasies and stories so that you can get this physical release. And she is not a participant. She's just being used for that release and she can feel it in her nervous system. And so then she begs for, will you tell me that I'm the only one, that I'm special? And you outsource that to text messages and to doing the dishes and to opening the door and putting your hand on the small of her back. All those are important things, but both of y'all are just trying to breathe through a straw. Uh. And unless you both sit down and say, all right, how long have y'all been married? Almost 15 years. 15 years. Here's the top 10 fantasies of mine. You ready? All right. We're going to go down a rabbit hole. And y'all both agreeing, curiosity, not judgment. All right, tell me about that one. Why is that exciting? Mm. And being able to sit in that tension, in that space. And I know people are listening to this right now being like, I could never tell the person I'm married to that I had this thought one time of, and I would tell you, that's the problem. Because I know secrets kill relationships and people can feel when they're, when they're not connected. And the problem with a lack of connection with two married people who are sleeping together is it, it, it accentuates how far apart you are, even though you're in the middle of one of the most intimate physical acts possible. Cause you both know you're not there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Have you, um, I've joked about this before and it ended up not being a joke. Like it ended up with a life of its own and it ended up being hilarious. Um, have you tried the John Deloney erotic envelope system? Have you heard me talk about that? Um, uh, I've, yes, actually my wife and I just did that, uh, a few months ago. How was it? I don't remember if it was the exact same thing, but it's very similar. It was where we put, um, 10 things, things we wanted to try. Yep. Yeah. Like it was five things per person, okay. I think. Um, and we put on each on a different piece of paper and into a jar and we pulled one out each night and talked about it. Okay. And that was good. Um, but she wrote down nothing having to do with sex whatsoever. And mine were like three out of five were sex related. But that's super instructive. What were her things? Um, like she wanted to study language together and, and let's like do a hobby together and, 
Um, I don't remember what else, but we, we have them written down upstairs. And were you curious about those? Um, yeah, I feel like we could have had more conversation about the items that we pulled out, but um, I want to pick them back up. I certainly want to review them with her. Because that, that's going to tell her, or that's, 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 that's her clumsy way of telling you what she's missing. And your your three or four or five or six or ten fantasies or sex acts, the things you want to participate, y'all want to do together, that sense of aliveness and adventure and desire and thinking about it all day and her being a full participant, not for you, but with you, that's what you're missing. And there feels like there's not a bridge to get there. So you go through the motions, you do the acts, but you're in your head somewhere far away with, with different people. Yeah. And learning a language is a, is a way of, it, it, it's a, it's a, uh, I'm trying to say it in a not cheesy way. It's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a knowing, right? It's a coming together. In a deeply intimate way. We have done a thing. We've been through a hard thing. And now we have a way of communicating that no other people in our life do. Like the depth of intimacy in there and that request is so deep. But since it doesn't involve like, I don't know, a new outfit and some weird music and some like, like whatever, like whatever you got in your head, it, it it's easy to bypass the sensuality to it. And so here's what curiosity looks like. I'll just walk you through it. So I want to learn a language with you. That's when you pull out of the envelope and you're kind of bummed out because you were hoping it would be like some wild, like, all right, here's what we're going to do. And she, you, she pulls out one and it's some weird, like exotic sex act you've, you've conjured up or you saw in some movie back when you were 19 years old, whatever. And here we are. And so immediately there's a little bit of disappointment from both of you. All he wants is my body. I'm not even a participant. All she wants is to just not be erotic and not whatever. Think about the tension building and the play building and the eros that would be in your home if you both, and I'm making something up here, you both learn Spanish. And then you went on a date in Spanish. And you both were people like, you were both from Spain and you went to some, you see what I'm saying? Like this thing could end in this wild romantic night. But it's about getting the layer beneath the layer beneath the layer. You know what I'm saying here? Or is it like, am I sound like a lunatic? No, I get you. I, I totally understand. It makes sense. Yeah. I also know that this can be incredibly terrifying and very lonely. And I hate that for you. Yeah, well, some of the some of the things that you mentioned are great, and I I have talked about some of this stuff with her, and it seems like, I mean, again, like the stuff I bring up, she's not interested in it, and the stuff that she brings up, I try, but then it, again, it just feels like it goes nowhere. Is the interest in I'm not interested in um, being a member? I don't want I don't want to be a cast member in that particular movie, or is it I don't want to have that adventure with you? It's, um, I'm not interested in sharing. I'm not interested in like that particular roller coaster. I'm honestly not sure. I think that's the question because my guess is, um, there are some things that people say, dude, I'm just not comfortable with that or that hurts or I don't feel good. Like that, that, that's part of it. And that's just about open dialogue and, and, and talking back and forth. But often, if there is a pattern of performance, a pattern of, I am, I'm just doing this for you, but I am not a, I'm not doing this with you. Then just another layer, another outfit, another whatever, another fantasy to layer on top of that. Um, Nah, I'm not really interested in that. But 
I don't, I don't want to be an actor in your movie. But if I, but if you'll let me co-write a script with you, I'll be in for that. Uh, that's good. Okay. And so the layer beneath it is, I feel loved when you've been thinking about me all day. And I feel loved when I know that you can't keep your hands off me. And so what world would we have to create where that was possible? And her saying, and you saying with her, this sounds like one of the most valuable things she values with you is your time. Yeah. And so what does that look like? But I feel like there's a lot of whack-a-mole intimacy up on top of the surface here, and there's just lower layers. What's your chief? What's your chief fear in this marriage? Um. Now I guess it would be that um, she just wouldn't want to. Uh, she would. Uh, she would show no interest in getting to know me, or not care about uh, wanting to enter my world, or know what's really going on in my mind. Or okay, have you said those things? Have I said those things to her? Yeah. Yes, I have. And she just said, you're right. I don't want to know you. Um, she admitted to having those feelings in the past, in the early years of her marriage. What's but, that? Um, sorry? What feelings? I don't even want to know him? Yeah, feelings like she just is married to me because I'm the breadwinner and she doesn't really want to get to know me on a deeper level. And that's the way we got through our first seven or eight years of marriage. Um, and, you know, I almost left the family. I almost got a divorce back then, but things are different now. We've worked through a lot of our issues and it's a lot better now than it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, but I'm just afraid that that's going to come back. Is there, is that possible? I don't know. Is it probable? Um, I don't know. I can see, I can see how it could be, how it could happen. Yeah. But do you also see how you're creating a self-fulfilling prophecy? Not exactly. Things were bad seven or eight years ago. No question. I mean, you have a woman telling you like, I really didn't care about you. You were a safe bet. And I needed a, a a warm bed to sleep in. And so I was willing to high five you a couple times a week. I didn't really care about you. And you felt that every second of your life, seven or eight years ago. And did you did you have somebody on deck during that time? Did you have a coworker that made you laugh or somebody that you texted back and forth with that you thought, man, this would be my my off ramp? Mm, not really, no. Okay. So you just were all alone in your misery? Yeah, I was pretty lonely. Okay. Um, so your body put a GPS pin in that. And now you hedge. You don't tell the full truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because that would have gotten you burned seven or eight years ago. And what it's hard to realize is the house is on fire right now. And so you're not going to tell her everything. She's just going to continue to, you're going to live in your head and you're going to act it out in real life. And she's just going to put up with it. And you're going to find yourself back in that same pattern of she will participate a couple of days a week because it keeps you happy and it keeps the money depositing in the direct deposit. And as much as you're in your head during those times, she's for sure in her head thinking about other things, right? Like bills or laundry or whatever else, but not what you wish she was thinking about. And it just creates what y'all have already had. And that's different than sitting down and saying, I want us to build something together. And giving her the opportunity to say, I'm not doing that. 
because you got to deal with that issue. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I know it's terrifying. Do you think she's going to like be out or that she's going to force you to say, okay, then I, I don't want to be a part of this? No, divorce is not on the table. There's, there's no chance of us separating. But, okay. Um, okay, here's what's beautiful about what you just said. There's no chance this ends. Zero. And so now all you have to choose is one or the other. Do we want a home of eros and desire and playfulness and fun and connection? Or do we want a house of loneliness and performance and a descending misery? Because we're not going to leave. And yeah. one of those seems infinitely more fun than the other. And one of those are both, I mean, the, the, the playful, fun, life's pretty hard. Let's just have as much fun as we can in this deal. Means we're not going to have sex all the time. And it means not every night of sex is going to be the Super Bowl. There is just going to be boring married sex sometimes, and that's great. It's awesome. And there's going to be what one woman told me, uh, it feels like a warm hug. It's just connective. It's not adventurous. It's not, ah, it's not that. It's just gentle connection. Good time. And then there's adventure nights and there's fun times. And there's also, hey, what does intimacy look like outside of the bedroom? Let's sign up for a dance class together. Let's do, oh, you want to do things with me? I'm going to make you a priority in my life. We're going to co-create. We're going to co-write this script. You're not just going to be an actor three nights a week in my head. And that's just a totally different life. And, and bro, just so you know, you're not, by, you're not alone, man. This is the state of modern marriage. Two people expecting the other person to fulfill them instead of sitting down and saying, dude, let's make something amazing together. And it's not going to be amazing all the time. But let's build towards something awesome where we laugh a lot and play a lot. And I'm going to concede here and I'm going to compromise here. And I don't even know why you're kind of into this because it's kind of weird, but I'm going to play along as long as I feel comfortable and I feel safe. And that's too weird or that's super painful or I, I I'm can't. All right, let's have that conversation. Let's just have it. And sometimes the Eros is in the conversation. Tell me more about that. What is it that's exciting about that? Where did that even pop into your head? Right? That can become some of the most intimate conversations and learning. And you learn about your fears, learn about what you're into, learn about what scares you, learns about what like really makes your heart start beating. Man, what feels a little deviant, all those things. Man, you get to share that with somebody, especially anchored in. Well, we're never leaving each other, ever. Gosh, that sounds amazing. But you both got to be willing to go for it. Go all in. I'm grateful for you, brother. Thanks for being open and for giving me a buzz. I think the conversation that I would start with if I was in your situation would be to take my wife out and say, hey, I realized over the last four or five years our marriage has gotten good. It's gotten real good. But I've made you an actor in my world, in my movie. I want to write something with you. Let's do this together. Let's go build something amazing. And in so doing, I want you to tell me beneath the, let's do a class together, beneath, I want you to wear a nurse's outfit together, whatever the thing is, beneath all that, like, what kind of world do we want to create? What does that look like? Thank you so much for the call, my brother. I'm grateful for you. 